Greetings, fam. Um, I'm going to jump right in because there really is no time to waste. Um, I will I will preface this by saying that, you know, I know I've been away for a while, but I actually didn't go anywhere. I've been focusing on my street ministry, so I've been out in public uh, playing my cello, and I actually had uh, these angel wings. I was playing my cello with my angel wings and my halo because I wanted people to know who I was, what I was about, and I was hopeful that it would help to engage people in conversation and fellowship. And it did. I did get an opportunity to minister uh, quite a few times, and for that I am grateful, and I will be going out again. But I stopped in order to bring you this message, because it was very important to me to be obedient to the Word. And so what has come to me um, in terms of uh, ministry is that many of you do not realize that we are living in the last days. Now, let me just be clear on something because, um, and if you see me look away from the camera, it's because I'm looking at my Bible notes and I want to be able to quote scripture correctly. How do I know this? Well, I don't. Um, in Matthew 24.3, uh, the disciples specifically asked Christ, well, how will we know when we're in the last days? And even the people, they wanted to know, well, when is the end of, of this um, the system? And that's from Luke 4, 43. They wanted to know, you know, when is uh, earth going to be devoid of wickedness and, and make the earth a paradise again? And so, you know, Jesus answered. He said, well, you know what? Only God knows. Only Jehovah God, this is what Jesus says, uh, knew exactly when the end of the system would come. Matthew 24, 36, and um, Jesus did foretell things that would take place on earth just before the kingdom uh, would be uh, uh, bring the true peace and security to mankind. And what he foretold is now taking place. You know, when you're out on the street and you're doing the street ministry, um, you get to see a lot of things. And by seeing things my eyes were extremely opened because ever since I came out of the streets from being, excuse me, from being homeless, once you've really been homeless and lived in the street, when you finally get a place, the last thing you want to do is be out in the street again, even on your own. You just don't want to be there. You just want to stay inside and enjoy your place. But when I went out, when the Spirit told me, go out, do the ministry, play, play songs, play your cello, um, engage the people in um, edifying conversation, I got to witness many different things. And I also became very observant of people. And one of the things that I saw was that there are so many miserable people out there. There were people, I would be out there, I play, when I play, I'm smiling. I'm smiling because I'm happy. Uh, and this is going to sound like a song, but I, I, and it is, it's from the eye is on the sparrow. I smile because I'm free, but I also smile because I am blessed because God delivered me from that hellish existence. Oh my goodness, every single time I think about those nights that I slept on the subway and how the Lord delivered me from that, I, I am so grateful that I just, I can't frown. I have to be good. I have to spread cheer because I have something to be cheerful about. And we all do. So I don't want, I, don't, I know I go off of topic and I guess it's an old folks thing. Oh, by the way, guys, I had a birthday since the last time you guys saw me. Yes, indeed. And I'm actually um, 62 now. And this is my this is my no makeup face. This is me with nothing. I have no 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 paint on nothing. It's just me, myself, and I. And um, and that in itself is a blessing that God has restored what the canker worms stolen, and that's from the Bible. So what am I saying to you? Well, my point in all of this is that you know if we know that the time 
is near, if we truly know and believe that Christ is going to return, then we need to conduct ourselves like so. Because now, no one, I'm not prophesying his return in terms of a specific date because no one knows this. I don't know it. Um, the word even tells us that um, no one will know the the day or the hour. And um, one of the things that ha, um, has come to, I'm, I'm going to move my notes because I actually can't see them. And I'm also going to move this light so that I can actually, um, you know, be mindful of, of, of what I'm looking at. Because um, if you can't see what you're reading, then you can't read it. <laughs> so... So, um, there's a war. There's a war going on in heaven. I have so much to share with you on this topic. And I'm going to get into today's events that clearly foretell the coming of Christ. But I want to just say, you know, uh, there is a war. It's a war that has gone on, you know, for some time. And that war was between the enemy and Christ. And, and he was kicked out of heaven, but he is, he is angry, so the war is still going on. So people, the biggest lie the enemy ever told was that, um, well, not that he has convinced people, is that he doesn't exist. There are many people who are living today like this is never gonna end, like it's one big long party. I know young people who are involved in all types of um, debauchery and wickedness, and they're living as if there is no God and there is no devil. And that's the biggest, biggest mistake that people can make. Now, what are the major developments that are happening in the last days that we should look at and realize that, you know what, this, this has something to it. it it's it's real. Okay. For instance, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Matthew 24, 7. Millions of people have been killed in wars during the past century, and it's still war going on. Just recently, there were soldiers that were, were blown up. There's all sorts of um, things. One British uh, historian, he wrote, that the 20th century was the most murderous in recorded history. It was a century of almost unbroken war with few brief periods that there wasn't some type of armed conflict. Now, the World Watch Institute, which is a, a, a place that keeps track of things, and I, I thank God for the people who devote their lives to keeping us informed. This is something that I do, but I, there are others who do it on a much, much larger scale. And World Watch Institute is one of them. And they said three times as many people fell victim to war in the 20th century as in all the wars from the first century AD to 1899. More than 100 million people have died as a result of wars since 1914. And I, I can't even imagine the sorrow of losing someone in warfare. But indeed, people, you, you've got to know that this is something that is ongoing and ongoing. And then we've got our current administration that seems to have no problem with inciting even more war. Um, but I'm not going to go too much into that because a lot of you already know from looking at my Trump videos how I feel about this current administration. But there were other things that were predicted in the Bible that are happening this day. There will be food shortages. Matthew 24 7. Researchers say that food production has increased greatly during the past 30 years. Nevertheless, there are food sh shortages that continue because many people do not have enough money to buy food or land on which to raise their own crops. Now, I can tell you, I live here in New York, and food here is outrageous, and especially where I live. I live downtown Manhattan, and we've got, there's a Whole Foods one block away. 
but you'll never see me in there. As a matter of fact, I refer to them as whole paycheck because that's exactly what you're going to spend in there. You could spend a hundred bucks and come out with one little shopping bag. There's nothing in there that's cheap. And, um, and it used to be a time that I could get on a bus and go to the hood and get like chicken backs, which is really cheap. It's also like the, the leanest part of the chicken. But now, even in the hood, the markets are priced really high because you've got the hood turning into this gentrified um, upscale neighborhoods. Harlem is no longer the Harlem of the past. It's, it's very... Um, it's very different now. Okay. Um, there will be great earthquakes. And that's from Luke 2111. According to the geological survey that's done um, every year in the U.S., there are an average of 19 major earthquakes every year. And they're powerful enough to damage buildings and crack the ground. And it's not just earthquakes. Although the Bible was specific about the earthquakes, you have these tor tornadoes and hurricanes, and look at, oh my God, the poor people of Puerto Rico. They're, they're, they're without food as a result of, of this, these calamities. And in some areas, they're without water, which is, which is what you, the main thing you need to survive. You can live without food, but you cannot live without water. You have to at least have water. Um, there will be pestilences. Luke 2111, again. Despite the medical advances, there are all types of new diseases that are coming about and plagues. But what I find really interested, uh, interesting is this onset, this big onslaught of cancer. You've got little kids with cancer, and I'm talking enough to fill an entire hospital. You've got these hospitals that are on TV asking for money because they're trying to help these little kids with cancer. Never in my entire generation have I seen a time as now where there are so many children who are being diagnosed with diseases that were previously um, connected to, to old age. Now you've got people, you know, who um, they, they've got these diseases in their youth. So they may not even make it to old age. And um, there, there are a few other things. I mean, um, okay, you've got TB that's been around a long time. Malaria has made a comeback. And cholera, they've be become more common in recent decades. And these are diseases that were supposedly um, extinct, but they've returned. And they're not, and they're not always curable by drugs. At least 30 new diseases have appeared in, in recent times, and many of them have no known cure or are fatal. Um, the people of the last days, now this is something that's spoken about as well, and that's in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Aside from identifying certain world de developments, the Bible foretold that the last days would be marked by change in human society. The Apostle Paul described what people in general would be like. We are told in the last days, critical times, hard to deal with, will be here. Many people are suffering right now. Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, said that people would be, one, lovers of themselves. Two, lovers of money. Sound familiar? Uh, three, disobedient to parents, disloyal, having no natural affection, without self-control. You want to know how I got fat? No self-control. I'm, I'm losing. Now I'm losing because, you know, anything you ask God for, do you know that he will give it to you? Even, even some things we don't need. And as a lover of food... I became obese. That's lack of self-control. Gluttony is a sin. Fat people who love to eat. Now there's some people who might have um, be fat because of other things like, um, you know, uh, 
what do you call it? Uh, oh, I can't think of it right. Oh, thyroids. And, and other, other things that can cause you to get fat. There's medication that can make you fat. But I can't use that excuse. I am and was a lover of food. Um, and I had no control. I had a lack of self-control. And this is what we have now. We have a lot of people out there who have no self-control. You've got men and women who have no self-control in their um, intimate lives. Uh, a niece of mine told me that there are sites on the internet where people can go and, and you don't even have to know the person's real name and you can just meet solely for the purpose of having sex. And, and I think that's terrible. I think it's horrible. But this is what they do now. Um, Psalm 92.7 describes what happens to wicked people. And all of this is wickedness. These sins of the flesh, that's wicked. And it's being pushed down our throats. I can't even look at a movie now without seeing some type of sex scene. There's all, and now it's even worse. Because now they, there's no shame. So you can see... Um, children uh, being um, sexually um, active with or without their permission on film. These things are considered entertainment. That's not entertainment. I was a child who was molested. And I'm going to tell you guys that there was nothing positive about that experience. So the last thing I want to see or would consider entertainment is seeing a child being um, sexually abused. A kid knows nothing about that. And so when you've got these films and you put these kids in there, and I wonder what happens to the psyche of the kid that's in the film who's, who's being having these things done to them. I'm wondering if they walk away from that role and still have all their bearings. Because I honestly believe a lot of these children who grew up in Hollywood became sick as a result of some of the sick things that they were required to do for the role. Okay, Psalm 92, it describes what happens to people who, in, who uh, indulge in wickedness. Um, have people become like that in your community? Look around you, no doubt. There are people everywhere who have bad traits. And when the wicked, and this is, I'm quoting Psalm 92, 7, when the wicked sprout like weeds and all the wrongdoers flourish, it is that they may be annihilated forever. So people, you are the company you keep. If you are in the company of people who are doing wickedness, the water cannot run, both, and I've said this before, the water cannot run both clean and unclean. It's either dirty water or it's clean water. So if you're running around with people who are always jumping in that dirty water and they're not afraid to get muddy and down and dirty, sooner or later you're going to join them. Because why would you, and this, and I, and I want to talk to Christians too. Some of you, some of my, my Christian folk, you're all holy and godly around your Christian friends, but you also have that other set of friends that you sit and you gossip with and you get high with and they're drinking, you're drinking, you play cards with you. You know, there's nothing edifying about your friendship with, with these friends. And I'm not saying you should drop them, no. But you should be using your walk to minister to them and sure if people who are knee deep in sin they don't want to hear it they don't want to hear a sermon but it is your duty as a christian this is what we do we bring people to christ and so you keep preaching until they make you go away or they don't invite you anymore and then who cares because you wouldn't want to be in that environment anyway if you're truly in your walk now, there's some positive developments. And I want to say, you know, the true knowledge, how it becomes abundant in, in this end time, the last days are indeed filled with woe, just as the Bible foretold. 
In this troubled world, however, there are positive developments among the worshipers of Jehovah. And the true knowledge will become abundant. And this the Bible book of Daniel foretold. When would that happen? During the time of the end, Daniel 12.4, especially during the time of the end. Um, Jehovah helps those who truly desire to serve him to grow in understanding of the Bible. We grow to appreciate the precious truths that are contained therein. Um, this truth that is taught us about God, his name, his purpose, the sacrifice of Jesus, the condition of the dead, the resurrection. And moreover, we worshipers of Jehovah have learned how to live our lives in a way that benefits us and brings praise to God. The world that I see around me today, the world that I see when I go out and I, and I do my street ministry and I play my instrument, I see the lovers of selves. I see the lovers of money. Because these people, they're proud. They proudly go up and down the avenues and about their day wearing the badge of what they identify with. It's just like you see... Um, a person in a certain attire, maybe a uniform, maybe a policeman. So you identify them with that uniform. Oh, well, he's wearing the police uniform. He's a cop. People who love themselves, they wear the uniform of that self-love. This is why I remember back in the day there were people who had rings on every finger. And I knew a lady like that. She had magnificent nails. She had rings on every finger. She had um, magnificent necklaces and earrings. And she just wanted to wear her self-love through her things. And we have to remember that these things, they, they rust. And, and they, they um, sometimes thieves, they break in and steal. And this comes from the Bible as well. So we can't get caught up in the things on this earth because and you've heard it before when you die you can't take it with you those of us who love the lord and we get this clear understanding we realize the role of god's kingdom and how it will set these matters straight on earth a lot of what you're seeing today on earth is going to be obliter obliterated when god's kingdom comes these are the last days and time of the enemy. So he is going to get, it's like squeezing the juice out of the orange. He's going to get that last bit of sin out. Every single decadent, immoral thing that he can poison this world with, he's going to do that. Because this is what he does. Um, the good news of the kingdom it's going to be preached. It's going to be preached even if I die tomorrow. So there's always someone who is going to be preaching the good news. And the good news is that if you come to the Lord today, you will be saved. And, and you, you will get restored and you will not have to worry. I cannot tell you the peace that comes from not having to worry. And that's from the word also. But I want you to really to go and read Matthew 24, 3 and 14. Matthew 14. So Matthew 24, 3, verses 3 and 14. Where it talks about the conclusion of this system, this beast system that we're in now. It's coming to a conclusion. And those of you, whether you're in the world or you're in the word, read that so that you can know that this is going to end. As much 
as we may not want it to, it is going to end. And I won't say we, because I personally cannot wait to meet Jesus. But there are some of you who are having such a great time that you don't want it to end. Okay. There's so many Bible prophecies that are being filled today that I actually believe that we are in the last days and time. But God's time is not our time. People, I cannot stress to you enough. Change your ways. Those of you who are still courting sin, change your ways. The Bible says we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. In order to, to make an honest change in your behavior, in your desires, it's got to start up here. This is where it starts. And we're going to, to pray and ask God to give us the strength and the guidance needed to not only seek him but find him and serve him in this lifetime. Lord, I thank you for the listener of the word. I, I thank you so much for the ministry. Thank you for uh, somebody needed this, Lord, and I thank you for her, those individuals that needed this. May they be blessed, Lord. May they come to you, Lord, because they've been waiting for a word. They've been waiting for confirmation. Oh, Lord, thank you for what you've done in my life. Thank you so much, Lord. Please, Lord, I hope that many people will be saved before the end comes. I pray that many will hear and be saved and change their wicked ways. In the mighty, mighty name of Jehovah Christ. Amen. Thank you.